Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today we have a very important topic to discuss tetanus. It's a disease that might not be on your radar, but it's essential to understand its causes, symptoms, and, most importantly, how to prevent it. So, let's dive right in. What is tetanus? Tetanus, often referred to as lockjaw, is a potentially life-threatening bacterial infection caused by the bacterium Clostridium tetani. This bacterium is commonly found in soil and can enter the body through open wounds, cuts, or puncture injuries. Once inside the body, Clostridium tetani produces a powerful neurotoxin leading to muscle stiffness, spasms, and can result in severe complications, including difficulty breathing and death. About Causal Agent of Tetanus Shape Clostridium tetani is a rod-shaped bacterium, meaning it has a cylindrical shape with rounded ends. These rods are typically straight or slightly curved. Size The size of Clostridium tetani bacteria can vary, but they are generally quite small, measuring around 0.5 to 2 micrometers in width and 2 to 4 micrometers in length. Gram staining It is gram positive, which means it retains the crystal violet stain used in the gram staining procedure. This characteristic is due to the thick layer of peptidoglycan in its cell wall. Endospore formation One of the most remarkable features of Clostridium tetani is its ability to form highly resistant spores. These endospores are oval and located terminally within the bacterial cell and giving drumstick-like appearance. The spore-forming ability allows the bacterium to survive adverse conditions, including exposure to heat and chemicals. Motility Clostridium tetani is usually motile by the means of Paratrichus flagella. Anaerobic It is an obligate anaerobe, meaning it thrives in environments devoid of oxygen. This anaerobic metabolism is essential for its ability to produce the tetanus toxin. What are the sources of tetanus infection? Tetanus is not a contagious disease that spreads from person to person like a cold or the flu. Instead, it is caused by the introduction of the bacterium Clostridium tetani into the body through wounds or injuries. Here's how tetanus transmission occurs. Soil. Clostridium tetani is commonly found in soil, particularly soil that contains organic matter. Gardening, farming, or playing in soil can potentially expose individuals to the bacteria. Gardening tools. Garden tools, especially those that come into contact with soil, can harbor tetanus bacteria. Puncture wounds caused by stepping on a rake, shovel, or other garden tools can introduce the bacteria. Animal feces. Tetanus bacteria can be present in the feces of animals, including farm animals like cows, horses, and sheep. Contact with contaminated feces or manure can pose a risk. Rusty objects. Contrary to common belief, rust itself is not a source of tetanus. However, rusty objects like nails, barbed wire, or other sharp materials can provide an ideal environment for tetanus bacteria to thrive especially if they are in contact with soil or organic matter. Puncture injuries. Puncture wounds, such as those caused by stepping on a nail or getting cut by a dirty or rusty object, are particularly concerning as they can introduce tetanus bacteria directly into the body. Burns and surgical wounds. While less common, tetanus can also develop in burn injuries, surgical wounds, and other non-penetrating wounds if the conditions are conducive for the growth of the bacteria. How tetanus cause disease, pathogenicity in human. Bacterial entry. The tetanus infection begins when Clostridium tetani bacteria enter the body through wounds or injuries, especially those that are contaminated with soil, dirt, or other organic material. Bacterial Multiplication Once inside the body, the bacteria can multiply and grow. Toxin Production Clostridium tetani bacteria produce a powerful neurotoxin called tetanospasmin. This toxin is responsible for the symptoms and effects of tetanus. Toxin Uptake Tetanospasmin is absorbed by nerve endings at the site of infection, and it travels along peripheral nerves to the central nervous system, spinal cord and brain. Interference with nerve function. Tetanospasmin interferes with the normal functioning of nerve cells by blocking the release of neurotransmitters that control muscle contractions. This interference leads to a state of hyperactivity in motor neurons. Muscle stiffness and spasms. The hyperactivity of motor neurons causes uncontrolled and prolonged muscle contractions. These contractions result in muscle stiffness and spasms, typically starting with the jaw and neck muscles, which is why tetanus is often referred to as lockjaw. The spasms can then spread to other muscles, including those needed for breathing. Severe symptoms and complications. As tetanospasmin continues to affect nerve function and muscle control, it can lead to severe symptoms, such as arching of the back, difficulty breathing, and potentially life-threatening complications like respiratory failure or heart problems. What are the symptoms of tetanus? The incubation period of tetanus can vary, but it typically ranges from 3 to 21 days after the initial infection or injury. Symptoms of tetanus include Muscle stiffness Stiffness and tension in the muscles, especially in the jaw and neck muscles. This symptom often leads to difficulty in opening the mouth, 
giving rise to the condition known as lockjaw. Muscle spasms. Painful muscle spasms, which can be severe and occur frequently. These spasms can affect various muscle groups, including the facial muscles, back muscles, and abdominal muscles. Difficulty swallowing. Tetanus can cause difficulty in swallowing, known as dysphagia, due to the stiffness and spasms of the throat muscles. Fever. A fever is common in tetanus cases. The body's temperature may rise above the normal range. Sweating. Excessive sweating, especially during muscle spasms. Rapid heart rate. An elevated heart rate, tachycardia, can occur as a result of the increased stress on the body due to muscle spasms and pain. High blood pressure. Hypertension, high blood pressure, is another common symptom of tetanus. Arching of the back. In severe cases, individuals with tetanus may experience muscle contractions that cause their backs to arch backward, a condition known as opisthotonus. Difficulty breathing. Tetanus can affect the muscles needed for breathing, leading to respiratory problems. Severe cases can result in breathing difficulties, potentially leading to respiratory failure. Irritability and restlessness. People with tetanus may become irritable and restless due to the pain and discomfort caused by muscle spasms. It's important to note that tetanus symptoms can progress rapidly, and the condition can be life-threatening if left untreated. Therefore, immediate medical attention is essential if someone exhibits symptoms of tetanus. How to diagnose tetanus? Clinical evaluation. A physical examination will be conducted to assess the individual's symptoms. The healthcare provider will look for common tetanus symptoms such as muscle stiffness, spasms, lockjaw, and other neurological signs. Wound assessment. If there is a history of a wound or injury, the healthcare provider will carefully examine the wound. Laboratory tests. While there is no specific blood test or culture to diagnose tetanus, laboratory tests may be performed to rule out other conditions with similar symptoms. These tests might include blood tests, cerebrospinal fluid analysis, and imaging studies like X-rays or CT scans. Tetanus vaccination history. The individual's tetanus vaccination history is crucial. A complete and up-to-date vaccination history can be reassuring, while a lack of recent tetanus vaccination or an unknown vaccination status may raise concerns. What are the treatments for tetanus infection? The treatment of tetanus is a medical emergency and involves a combination of approaches to manage the symptoms and control the infection. Here are the key components of tetanus treatment. Wound care. If a wound is present, it is crucial to thoroughly clean and disinfect it to remove any contaminated material and reduce the bacterial load. This is done to prevent further bacterial growth and toxin production. Tetanus immune globulin, TIG, tetanus immune globulin, a preparation containing antibodies against the tetanus toxin, is administered as soon as possible after tetanus is suspected. TIG helps neutralize the tetanus toxin in the body, limiting its effects. It provides immediate, short-term protection against the toxin. Tetanus vaccine. Individuals with tetanus receive a tetanus vaccine, usually in the form of the tetanus toxoid vaccine. This helps boost the immune response to the tetanus toxin and provides long-term immunity. Medications. Medications are often used to control muscle spasms and rigidity. Muscle relaxants and sedatives, such as diazepam, valium, or midazolam, may be administered to manage muscle symptoms and prevent convulsions. Supportive care. Supportive care in a hospital setting is crucial. This includes monitoring vital signs, providing oxygen therapy, and, in severe cases, assisting with mechanical ventilation to help with breathing if respiratory muscles are affected. Pain management. Pain relief medications may be given to alleviate the discomfort caused by muscle spasms and rigidity. Antibiotics. While antibiotics do not directly affect the tetanus toxin, they are administered to help control the growth of Clostridium tetani bacteria at the infection site. Penicillin is commonly used for this purpose. Surgical procedure. In some cases, surgical debridement may be necessary to remove dead or infected tissue from the wound, which can harbor the bacteria. Intensive care. Severe cases of tetanus may require admission to an intensive care unit, ICU, for close monitoring and specialized care. How to prevent tetanus. Tetanus vaccination. Ensure that you and your family members are up to date on tetanus vaccinations. Tetanus vaccines are typically given as part of a combination vaccine, such as the DTAP vaccine for children or the Tdap vaccine for adolescents and adults. Booster shots. Receive tetanus booster shots is recommended. Booster shots are necessary approximately every 10 years to maintain immunity. Booster shots are particularly important for adults to ensure ongoing protection. Wound care. Properly clean and disinfect wounds as soon as they occur to reduce the risk of tetanus infection. Use soap and clean water, and if available, an antiseptic solution. Seek medical attention. If you sustain an injury that is potentially contaminated with soil, dirt, or other foreign material, consult a healthcare professional promptly. Protective gear. 
When working in environments where there is a risk of puncture injuries or exposure to soil or contaminated materials, use appropriate protective gear, including gloves and other safety equipment. Vaccination for high-risk groups. Some individuals may have an increased risk of tetanus due to their occupation or lifestyle. In such cases, healthcare providers may recommend more frequent booster shots. Pregnant women. Pregnant women should receive a Tdap vaccine during each pregnancy, preferably between weeks 27 and 36, to provide protection against tetanus to both the mother and the newborn. Post-injury vaccination. If you have a wound that is not up to date with tetanus vaccination, you may receive a tetanus booster shot along with tetanus immune globulin, TIG, if the wound is particularly high risk. Conclusion. Tetanus is a serious but preventable disease. By understanding the risks and taking proper precautions, you can protect yourself and your loved ones. Thank you for joining us. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others.